Uh, my name is Rami Al Shafi. Uh, I'll be uh, your mentor uh, today throughout the hackathon. Uh, if you need help, shout my name, raise your hand, or get my attention somehow. Uh, I'm here to introduce you to the hardware components that you have and what could be available to you uh, throughout the hackathon and with the process of uh, getting those uh, hardware equipment. Uh, so every one of you uh, should receive an individual kit. Everything in this kit is for you to keep. Uh, you can take it with you. It's our way to thank you for your time. Uh, in this kit, you'll, you'll uh, have a Raspberry Pi 3, and it should have an SD card uh, already inserted in it, and it's pre-configured with the right operating systems, and uh, we have already pre-installed all of the developer tools that you need there. Um, you should also have the automation fat, uh, which is the daughter board that goes on top of the Raspberry Pi. And it has a relay, and uh, a, uh, th this relay supports uh, up to 20, I think 24 volts. Um, and there are a sinking, sinking outputs, uh, also can handle up to 24 volts, and, and they connect to ground. So uh, let's say you hook up uh, an LED, the uh, ground uh, LED of the uh, LED should be connected to the output and that the output pin is going to be connected to ground or, or not. It's not going to supply voltage through it. Um, and then we have inputs. We have digital and, and analog inputs. Uh, the digital inputs are b buffering inputs, so also they can handle up to 24 volts. Uh, um, and you should get a power supply, and the power supply should provide you with enough current for additional components that you would be attaching on top of the Raspberry Pi. And uh, you should have an, an Ethernet cable uh, that you can connect it to the Raspberry Pi and then to the router or to your PC. And this is going to be um, how you're going to be communicating with uh, the Raspberry Pi. Um, you could eventually uh, configure, configure it to connect to the Wi-Fi uh, on, on, on your table. Uh, so you, you no longer need it, uh, it's really up to you. Um, but uh, you're going to be working with the Raspberry Pi in a headless model, okay? Uh, you should also have a, a 32 gigabyte thumb drive, and it will include the uh, golden image that we used to pre-configure the SD cards. So if you ruin your Raspberry Pi software-wise, you're, you're okay. Uh, and if you ruined it hardware-wise, we'll, we'll, we'll figure something out, okay? Uh, but yeah, feel courageous to ruin everything. It's okay. You can restore the full operating system. Uh, in this uh, thumb drive, uh, you should be able to also have a bunch of tools that we use to configure the SD cards for uh, multiple uh, operating systems, Windows and, and Mac and Linux. Um, and what else? I think uh, I also have an updated version of this thumb drive. I might walk around and, and give you a copy of uh, which is going to include all of the, all of the presentations, um, even though they're available online. But for convenience, uh, also we have the example codes uh, that you can use already uh, in this uh, thumb drive, and. Uh, and also, you're going to be getting um, the OCF uh, device spy. We call it device spy, which is basically a device that can simulate the client that you can use to manually generate git request and post request and do the onboarding. Uh, just kind of like uh, you could do every step uh, individually. Uh, also, you should have the onboarding tool and generic client. Uh, in this thumb drive. Okay. So everything I've said so far, you can keep with you. Uh, everything I'm going to say next uh, is we, we want to reuse in future hackathons. Um, so we have a, a general kind of kit, and it's kind of a pool 
of electronic components and whatnot. So I'm kind of briefly going to talk about each one. Uh, so we have a magnetic uh, contact switch, which is uh, can be used to uh, detect if a door is open or a window is open or closed. So you can sense uh, kind of or, or, or a cabinet or, or, or anything of that sort. Uh, we have also uh, a pack of environment sensors in this EnviroFAT, which includes an accelerometer and a light and color sensor and a, a temperature sensor and a humidity sensor and pressure sensor and uh, uh, altitude sensor as well. Uh, if, you, if you want the accelerometer alone, we have also a bunch of accelerometers. Um, this is a triple axis accelerometers. Uh, we also have a force sensor, so when you, when you press on it, the more force you give it, uh, it changes its resistance, and so you can map the difference in resistance to the amount of force uh, it's, it is sensing. So it would be great for like, you can put it uh, theoretically um, in the shoe, you can measure the force of your stepping or whatever. Uh, we have a stretch sensor, also uh, resistive. It's basically a conductive rubber, and if you stretch it, uh, it becomes less conductive and more resistive, and again, you can map that difference in resistance to the amount of stretchiness. Uh, we have a capacitive touch sensor also. Uh, I think it has maybe 12 leads. Uh, you can connect this to anything conductive or anything that has a lot of water, like a human, animal, fruit, anything. And it could be a button. So you could touch your partner and the, your, your partner becomes a button to do something you want, right? Uh, you can connect fruits. Uh, I don't know, we might have fruits. Uh, flex sensor, uh, also resistive. Uh, so. The more it flexes, the, cha the resistance changes. Uh, so you can map the, uh, the resistance difference to the amount of flex it's sensing. We have a liquid level sensor. Uh, this is like what do you have in your uh, car, gas tank. Uh, and we have a liquid flow meter. Uh, it has a wheel inside of it, and this wheel has a magnet. And then it has a whole effect sensor that senses that magnet passing by, and then you can count the revolution, the revolution per minute of this wheel, so you can, and then you can kind of calibrate uh, every revolution equals this m many liters uh, of liquid or whatever, or ounces. Uh, more sensors, well, we have an, an infrared sensor. We have a light and color uh, and proximity sensor. Also, it can sense gesture. So if you, if you move your hand up above it from right to left, it will know that you are going in this direction. So you can like have, I don't know. Uh, we have photo cell, also it's a resistor that changes its resistance based on the light it's, it uh, receives. And we have a whole effect sensor, which is sensor that senses a magnetic field. Uh, it, and we have a, a simple analog temperature sensor. Um, we have a motion detection sensor and also a soil moisture sensor. So if you have a plant, you put that moisture in and it tells you how moist the soil is so it, you can water only as needed. So if there is rain, you don't have to water anything. It doesn't have to be on a schedule. It's gonna be, it's gonna plant the, it's, it's gonna water the plant as needed. Um, ultrasonic sensor that can measure distance. Uh, the shortest distance is at three centimeters, and then it goes, I think, two meters. It could reach three meters. Uh, it, it's at, at a 45 peripheral angle, I guess. Um, we have a, a light transistor. If it receives light, uh, it connects. So it's pretty much a switch that you can switch on and off by light. And we have a pulse sensor, which kind of senses your heart rate. Uh, you can put it on your earlobe or your finger or on your chest, and it can uh, detect your, your heart rate. Uh, we have a, a vibration sensor. Um, 
uh, anytime, and this is a kind of a sensitive one. Um, so if you put it on an object and that object vibrated in any way, shape, or form, it, you, can, you can detect that. Uh, we also have another temperature sensor that's kind of sealed if you want to put it inside water or something like that. We have a lot of LEDs. Uh, I pretty much got every possible color I can get. Uh, so th the top row has kind of individual colors. Um, the bottom row, uh, the RGB, it's an LED that can uh, change it. It, it. it can be green, uh, red, and blue, and you can mix and match. Um, and I believe this is a common anode. So the long lead should be connected to ground. Uh, we have an, an IR LED, so you can actually generate an infrared. So you can map that with an infrared sensor if you want to um, play with the IR stuff. And uh, we have a, an ultraviolet uh, LED. And we have a lot of motors too. We have uh, a servo motors uh, that's kind of an angle based, uh, 0 to 180. And we have a, a mini vibrating sensor and uh, uh, a simple DC toy sensor. Um, and we have a bunch of drivers for this. So if you, if you want to supply more current for these motors, uh, and actually it's a good idea to separate these motors from the same power supply uh, as your Raspberry Pi because sometimes motors have a, a back electromagnetic field that could interfere with your Raspberry Pi and could reset your Raspberry Pi. Uh, so, yeah, ha have the power supply for the motors separate. Um, and and uh, these uh, drivers uh, give you the option to connect uh, a different uh, power supply. And we have a bunch of kind of inputs, like uh, potentiometers that you can use as knobs and uh, buttons and switches and uh, re remote controls and, and two axis joystick. Uh, we have also screens. Uh, we have an LCD screen that's colorful. We have a, an ink screen. Um, we have a, an OLED screen. Uh, we also have analog meters if you want to measure something, some signal. And we have a bunch of other stuff. Uh, resistors and the the one in the upper left corner is actually pretty cool. It uh, it's it's called the thermoelectric module. What it does, it maps differential uh, temperature differential to voltage differential. So if you give it voltage, it gives you both heat and cold. And this is what you get from like a thermoelectric refrigerator if you have one. Uh, also, it does the opposite. If you give it heat and cold, you can harness electricity. And maybe you've seen some products that, um, like a, a cook pot that has this, um, and you put water in the pot and you, when you cook something, and the fire is hot and the water is cold, and then you can actually harness energy out of, out of these modules. Uh, so they're, they're pretty cool. Um, we have alligator clips to connect things easier. We have a bunch of relays, uh, and these relays are much beefier than what you have on your uh, automation, automation fat. Uh, they can handle, I think uh, it's, it's written on it, but I think it's a 240 volts AC or DC. Uh, the one at the bottom, it's a, heating, it's a heating pad. You give it power, it heats up, and the more voltage you give it and current, it's uh, going to heat up. And it, uh, it's a gentle heat. The most important thing I would I want to point, point out is the bottom right is a micro USB breakout. So you can connect the same power supply to the, of the Raspberry Pi and use that to power your motors, for example. Uh, we have also magnets and, and extra breadboards. Uh, on top of this, we also have a, a team kit, so every team will have an additional kit that it can use, which has more uh, LEDs and resistors and breadboards and um, a screwdriver for your 
uh, terminal blocks. Um, also, we have a bunch of construction material, like wood and cardboard and uh, poster boards, tapes, glues, uh, yeah, uh, box cutters, scissors, whatever, you know, just a bunch of stuff uh, that you can take. And of course, the construction material, you don't have to return it because you probably cut it and do all kind of things with it. But yeah, uh, hopefully you would uh, enjoy this hackathon.